Renovation crews in Grand Center are putting the finishing touches on the Sun Theater. Kara Vanninger shows us what's been done since her last visit and shares the history of this landmark performance venue. This one has definitely been a very challenging project. Um, it's been very exciting to work on this. I'm ready for something that's maybe a, a little bit smaller scale and uh, not quite so um, deteriorated. The, the joke at the office is that my next project will have to be just a pile of bricks that I have to figure out how to put back together. <laughs> Over the past year of renovation, Aaron and his team uncovered just how much damage water and neglect can do to a once sturdy structure. I mean, at one point that was a half inch of steel. And we just, we were able to just basically put a hammer through it. Winter storms also took their toll during construction, blowing out the floor-length windows overlooking Grand Center. But work carried on through the unusually harsh St. Louis winter. The truss reinforced, the windows replaced, the plaster recreated. From the calcium deposits on the ceiling to the monster of a boiler in the basement, the theater seemed to have revealed all of its secrets. But in fact, Little is known about what actually went on inside the building over the past century and why its various owners and stewards seem to have extraordinarily bad luck. The last attempted revival was in the early 1980s when Harold Coppler donated the building to the theater project company. Their hope was to return it to its original use as a performing arts theater. It was during this time that a young set builder working out of the scene shop became intrigued by the lack of information and photos of what had once been a prominent building. It was about 30 years ago. <laughs> it's a fond memory for me. Um, I remember the scene shop being a typical scene shop, very functional, but as soon as you crossed through the fire doors to go onto stage, the devastation was just incredible. The house was a wreck. You know, the, t the chairs were crumbling and falling apart. Linda Lawson Mixon began digging for clues that might reveal a fuller picture of just what happened to the theater. In 1912, a bunch of the local German population had decided that they needed to have a permanent home for German theater. They sold stock to the German community, got enough money to buy the property and get started. The Victoria opened to rave reviews in 1913, performing Faust for its German-speaking audience. The amazing fact that a community of people got together, pulled the money together to be able to support their own personal heritage um, and to create an amazing structure uh, just says a lot. You know, it just it says a lot about their, their dedication not only to, to theater, but to art in general. It didn't take long for the theater to earn respect, and it was selected for not one, but two Edison tone test performances. It was this big promotional event, and they were doing these all across the country. And the concept of the tone test was to sell Edison's uh, diamond disc recording system. A vocalist would take the stage and sing, Edison's device recording her voice. All of a sudden, all the lights go out, and you're, but you're still hearing these vocals. The lights came back up. And the singer would be gone. The stage empty, but for Edison's amazing invention. Unfortunately for the Victoria and St. Louis's German population, the rise of World War I gave birth to fear and suspicion against German Americans. Their language was banned from schools, German books removed from libraries, and the Victoria, along with many other theaters of its kind in the U.S., was forced to close. The elegant theater was eventually transformed into a popular movie house when William Fox purchased it and renamed it the Liberty. A few years later, it stood empty again, when construction was completed on the Fox. It's unclear if its location off the main grand drag or constant repurposing stood in the way of the theater regaining relevance, long after the prejudice against the community that built it began to wane. It spent several decades morphing from nightclub to gentleman's club, from theater to cinema, burlesque house to church, constantly changing names, proprietors, and swinging from one end of the reputation spectrum to the other. In the end, it seemed to be simply a space for things to happen, with no identity and no one investing in it for the long term. Even the energy and good intentions of the theater project company weren't enough, and the plans for a rehab in the 1980s fell through. 
Now, three decades later, it's getting the attention that Linda and so many others have hoped for. I would never have imagined um, that it was that beautiful. The artistry and craftsmanship involved in the original structure and to, to see it reborn like that is just amazing. While the crew completes its finishing touches and the Grand Center Arts Academy faculty and students prepare to move in, one of the building's most distinguishing features is going into retirement. The intriguing cornice that has greeted patrons for the past century is being given a new home at the City Museum. We're really happy that we can actually put up the pieces and have as much of the cornice as we can make visible uh, at the same time that the building is still standing and has another use. 30 years of freeze-thaw cycle and water infiltration, the one corner was rusted beyond what it could handle and it collapsed one winter. I mean right there, that's probably half of what it used to be. And that's all from water damage? Water damage, yep. This kind of a system is designed to be maintained year in, year out, and it sat for 30 plus years and had zero maintenance on that. And once the water gets in and starts to rust away at these parts, there's nothing holding it up there anymore. The city has a huge history of brick and terracotta. We were built on it. And you know, to be able to continue to hold on to these pieces, it's just awesome. It's a really neat thing to be able to continue generations being able to see such things. The last record of a live performance at the theater was on New Year's Eve, 1956. Finally, after decades of darkness, the stage and the many young people who will step onto it have the chance to bask in the spotlight.